Alright, let's get going. And we're set. Hi, hi, welcome. Welcome to Workshop Wednesday Live. I'm Claudia from the International Museum of Art and Science here in McAllen, Texas. Thank you again for joining us for another episode of Workshop Wednesday, presented by HEB Helping Here. Today for um, March's Workshop Wednesday, we're gonna be talking about textile art. And I'm really excited because we're gonna be talking about a new artist that I discovered. And um, we're gonna be creating a textile piece that you can hang up in your house. So um, before we get started, I just want to mention uh, the supplies in case you didn't pick up a kit. So we were able to have kit pick up this past weekend. If you got a kit, it should have looked like this bag right here from HEB. This is a beautiful bag that was designed um, by an artist. There's an artist information card actually inside of the bag, and I'm really excited to talk about it. So there's this like little card inside that tells you about the artist um, who designed the bag uh, for HEB. And it's got this really nice collage of Texas. And we're all the way down here in South Texas. <laughs> so um, they should have gotten a bag and I'll go over the contents of the bag. If you didn't get a bag, uh, we um, are gonna need just minimal supplies. So all you need today to participate at home with us is a pair of scissors, or if you have a rotary cutter, that will work. Some scrap fabrics, some glue. If you have fabric glue, that'll work best. But really any kind of all-purpose glue would be great. Um, even if you had like double-sided tape, that would work as well. And then you're going to need a, a poster board or a cardboard piece or something so you can cut the fabric on. If you have like a mat board, that would be perfect. All right. So we have some, do we have some folks joining with us? How is the sound? How is everything sounding and looking? All right. How is this? How are we back? All right. Okay, cool. Okay. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties with the software. Okay, so we're back. We're going to jump right into it. Um, Workshop Wednesday Textile Art. Uh, I'm very excited because I love textile art. And um, like I mentioned, um, today's workshop is inspired by Bia Camille. And um, she is a Mexican uh, visual artist. She does a lot of uh, textile artwork. And I came across this and I thought this is so cool. We have to do this for Workshop Wednesday. Um, so you have everything in your kit that you're gonna need for today. Let me just go over it really quickly so you can be prepared. On your work surface, you should have gotten um, half a piece of poster board. If you wanna lay this out on your work surface, it's gonna protect your work surface because we're gonna be cutting and gluing and stuff. If you don't have poster board, you can use scrap cardboard. I think one person, Denise, who picked up early, I forgot to include it. I'm so sorry. So you can use scrap cardboard or um, if you have a mat board, I have a one that I brought from home. This is like a cutting a cutting mat. You can use this as well. So um, also included is craft glue. This is fabric glue. It is non-toxic and washable, uh, but uh, it, it might leave like a, a shiny stain if you don't get it out right away. Um, so just be aware. Should have gotten a pair of scissors. So we have two sizes of scissors that were included based on your age. Um, we have the smaller size, and then we have this 10 inch size. And these are dressmaking scissors. So um, this slant is like a little bit different from a normal pair of scissors that would have gone out. So that way you can cut on the table without much disruption. Um, so you wanna go ahead and open your scissors up. If you are, uh, an avid sewer, you might have one of these. This is a rotary cutter. So you can definitely use this today as well. Um, it'll make it much quicker. And um, for everyone who's participating, we're actually gonna give one of these away in our sewing bundle. So everyone who registered for a kit is automatically entered. If you wanna enter again, just leave a comment in the, in the, um, on the video here. And um, after the video ends, you're welcome to post your pictures. All additional comments are another entry for you to win the sewing bundle, which includes one of these rotary cutters, which are amazing. And you can get these at HEB. I got um, most of the supplies at HEB Plus, except for the fabric glue, but you can just use regular glue, really. Um, let's see what else is included. We have a ruler, which you're going to need to cut some straight lines. We have a friction eraser pen. This pen is amazing. It is uh, a thermal heat uh, ink. 
So that means that if you put a lot of heat on it, it's actually going to disappear. And I'm going to show you in a little bit how that works. And then a popsicle stick, you're going to need this to press the fabric glue out. This bag, you can just leave it to the side. We also included a flyer for our Brazeum um, fundraiser, Night at the Brazeum, save the date for April 9th. And tickets are on sale now. If you are 21 uh, or above, <laughs> um, go to our website to learn more about Brazeum. And lastly, you should have gotten some fat, some scrap bundles. Um, so I included a different set of bundles for everybody. So everyone got some different colors. I tried to curate like a color pattern for you based on the print that you received. So some people got like this really cool pink print. Some people got a palm tree print. Some folks got a map print. This one I really love. And then some people just got like really cool, interesting boutique prints. Um, but everyone just got something different. If you have scrap fabric at home, I encourage you to use it in this activity. Here's an old camp shirt that's really sweaty and stained <laughs> that I'm going to use. Um, so I brought that with me. Um, and that's everything that was included in your bag. We got a question. Yes. Down. They asked, can I make my textile art wherever I want? Sure, you can do whatever whatever design you want. If you don't want to use any of these colors, that's fine. If you want to make it indoors or outdoors, that's okay too. Um, I forgot to mention the wooden dowels. So what we're going to do is we're going to create something that you're going to be able to hang on your wall. And I have an example here of what I've created. Um, this is a little bit bigger than what we're going to be making today. But this is a little textile hanging. And um, you can see I just used different types of fabric to create some kind of repetitive shapes and lines um, and then glued it onto this dowel here. All right, so I have my poster board laid out. I have my scissors ready to go and um, my ruler and my pen. So that's what we're gonna need for right now. Before that, I wanna show you a little bit of uh, Bia Camila's work. And so this is her, this is uh, Bia. And like I mentioned, she's a Mexican artist. She lives and works in Mexico City. And she has exhibited some really cool works such as this one. These are a bunch of old t-shirts that she collected and sewed together to create these like tarp tents type of thing. And then she installed these and encouraged people to lay underneath them um, and just to hang out underneath them, kind of like as if it was like a sunshade. Um, and I just thought that was really interesting how she, she used something that just probably would have been tossed out. Uh, a lot of people toss out old shirts and things when they can be upcycled into rags or artwork. This is one that inspired me and you can sort of see the resemblance in the example that I made here where she has some, oh, might have to plug it in. <laughs> it's fine. How's the light? Is it so good? Yeah, it's okay. good. Um, you can see some repetitive uh, shapes here. So we have like this like curved shape here that she repeats. And I really love how she splits it in half. This is just a big wall hanging and she uses different colors and patterns. Um, and it all just like looks really balanced and cool. So this is what inspired me. And also this piece, which is a much longer piece, it takes up like a 20 foot wall. Um, and these materials she gets from old billboards or old canvas that might be from an old painting or canvas uh, like a drop cloth someone might have used to paint their house with. So she's always upcycling all of this trash to make really cool art with. Um, that's why today we're gonna be working with fabric scraps. So yeah, I just love this color. I, this idea of like mixing different colors and patterns together. Um, so we're getting it started. I hope that maybe you have some inspiration from her work. And if not, um, I just encourage you to use whatever inspiration is around you. Um, a lot of these colors, like these patterns are of nature, especially the palm tree one, that one was really fun. All right, so um, to start off with, I want to just sort of think about how I want to lay out my pattern. So I'm going to look through my fabric scraps and check out their colors and think about which ones I want to place next to each other, what shapes I want to make. So let's see, I got this pink pattern with this leaf design and this denim. 
And then I also have a black strip. And then I also have this gray block um, that I think I want to be my base. So I'm gonna lay that out. And just thinking about how, um, how I wanna design it. If you wanna design it vertically like this, so if you want your piece to go long ways like this, you can do that, or you can design it horizontally like this. I think I'm going to, since I did a, a horizontal one with this one, I think I'm gonna challenge myself into a vertical one like this, but you can do whatever whatever um, format you want to. So on the poster board, actually, I'm just going to quickly um, measure out 12 inches because I don't want my wall hanging to be longer than 12 inches. Uh, it gets really heavy after that, and then it also takes a really long time to do. This took me two hours to cut all the lines and glue everything together and make sure it was all how I wanted it to be. Um, and uh, today we're trying to um, just do something in about 45 minutes. So where is my pen? Okay, so with my pen, I'm just gonna kind of measure out here on my poster board, 12 inches. And it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, I can't really see what I'm. There we go. Okay. So my fabric is going to be about this long. And this is a little over 12 inches wide, but I think it'll work. Um, so because I don't want it to look like a square. I actually want it to look a little long. So I'm going to cut this down. Okay. So now I have my my ideal uh measurement here. Um what I'm going to do is I'm going to then split this in half because like like uh, like her work, her work, she kind of has this like line going through and she has these flipped uh, lines here. Like these are opposite. I, I love that. So that's what I want to do in my work as well. Um, so just split it in half and then thinking about what colors I want to do. I just want to kind of draw out my lines. So let's see. Just making this up as I go. Maybe we'll put a denim scrap here and then maybe some kind of like cool line here with the denim. And then maybe a, a gray block here. And then, um, let's see. I'm gonna put her, her work here. That way you can see what I'm seeing. I will say curved lines are really hard to do, so don't, don't do too many. Um, it's it's really hard to, when you glue them down, for them to stay. The fabric tends to, especially the cotton fabrics, tend to fray at the ends um, and they stretch just a little bit. So I'm happy with that. I like this, um, something like this here. So this is my design that I'm gonna go with. And now I'm going to start cutting. So I'm just thinking about my gray piece here. So go ahead and pick one fabric to be your base. My, my gray piece is going to be my base. And with your base, you're basically going to cut it to the size of the design that you made. So I made this 12 inches long by, I think this is, ends up being 11 and a half inches. I might put that down just a little bit. Um, so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. And if you have like these wrinkly bits, um, I wouldn't worry about it. I like that look. And sometimes when you put the wet glue on it, it, it tends to go away. This one's pretty a pretty deep crease. Uh, so what you can do is you can take the time to iron them if you want. But um, just encourage you to go with it because this is supposed to be like upcycling scraps. So you don't want them to look too perfect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my friction eraser uh, pen and I'm actually going to draw straight onto the fabric. So I have an idea of, um, I'm going to use this clear ruler so you can see what I'm doing here. But I have an idea of how, how what my dimensions are going to be, how long and how wide it's going to be, right? So I'm going to line up my ruler here. And I do everything opposite because I'm left-handed. 
So um, 12 inches here, and I'm actually gonna draw a line with the pen. And you might be thinking that you're crazy for using the pen on the fabric. Um, actually, the pen is erasable, like I said, right? So it, it erases with friction. So if, I don't know if you can see this, I'm gonna erase here on the paper. And it, it completely goes away. So you can't exactly erase on the fabric. It doesn't really work. So what you can do is actually um, heat it with a blow dryer. If you want to get the blow dryer to the highest heat, it'll it'll make this disappear. You have to you have to really get onto it for a little bit, and it'll disappear. Um, and you just want to give it a minute to cool down to make sure it didn't reappear, and then hit it again with the high heat, and it'll disappear. The other option is to um, place another piece of fabric over it and kind of iron it out once you have it all glued, but on medium heat, because if you do too high of a heat, um, the glue can come apart. So I encourage you to use the blow dryer method. And um, if you really don't want the lines to show and you're worried about them not erasing, what you can do is just draw on the back of the fabric. Um, the lighter color fabrics like the yellows and pinks might show through, just FYI. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut my my way this way, just a straight line, you know how to cross. All right, so now you can see I have my base here and I'm going to cut it out with my scissors. Like I mentioned, the scissors that we gave you are fabric scissors, so they're really sharp, so be careful doing it. And just take your time cutting through the scraps, it's okay not to be too perfect because you can always go back and trim it later. It's always best with fabric to cut too much than to cut too little. So be sure you don't cut off too much because then you'll have to work with whatever size you ended up with. We have a hello from Sylvia who's joining us right now. Sylvia, thank you for joining. I hope everyone liked the colors that I gave them. I tried really hard to pick pretty colors <laughs> um, and pretty prints. Okay, so I have my gray base here. Just gonna leave that there. Now I'm going to move on to my denim piece. Um, and, oh, um, I did not mention, but you definitely want to leave a little bit of room to um, for your dowel. So what we're gonna end up doing is gluing it over. So I'm actually just like going to leave exactly this much space where the crease is. That is about a couple, like two inches. Yeah, that's just over two inches of space. So um, about two inches will will get you a, a nice um, a nice fold to glue it down. So keeping that in mind. Okay. So now I'm going to work with my fabric, uh, my denim fabric here. And Anne, um, our president and executive director actually donated a ton of fabrics. This is one of them. So thank you, Anne, for this. This is really lovely. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna flip this over and work on the back of the denim because it's a lighter color so my pen can show up. And I wanted to do this piece as a denim piece. So, um, I want to do this piece and then I want to do a piece up here. So I might just do denim here as well. So I need two pieces of denim. And then this is going to be gray. And I like the idea of this being gray in the background. So I'm just making notes to myself. That way I can remember. Oh, yeah, I wanted this gray piece here. It's going to be a print. And drawing off my line that I erased. <laughs> um, I'll have to work something out here. Okay. So my denim block here. So what I'm going to do is take my ruler and just get some really loose measurements here. So two and a half by five, we'll call it five and a quarter um, is what I want to measure on here. A lot of measuring. You can also just free, free cut if you want. <laughs> Um, and see if it goes together, but I really want some some e even lines. So. so two and a half. Oh wait, I did this one. Two and a half wide. 
if I five and a quarter. Oh, we got some more hellos. We have um oh so Sylvia said she's doing this project with her daughter Lydia. Yeah. <laughs> and um we have Marissa asking, I don't know if this was mentioned already, but are the cuts layered or is it more like a puzzle? That's a great question. I did not mention that. Um, so um, okay, so it depends on if you're working with the base. With the base, it's gonna be more like a puzzle, and you're just going to glue it on top of each other to get the, the total piece. Um, so I hope this makes sense. So you're gonna glue it. This is the easiest way that I found. Now, if you wanted to, um, so I guess this is more of like a layered situation. You're gonna layer it on top of your base piece. Now, if you wanted to do more of a puzzle approach, I did just overcut, over allow here. So you can see that some of them, I, I glued on the edges together, the seams, and then I layered some pieces. This was actually really difficult um, to do. Uh, so it took a, that's why it took me a really long time. And um, I don't really encourage that. But if you wanted it to be uh, more of a, to have more texture look and to look a little bit more scrappy, I encourage you to like have different layers on top of it. Like this is two pieces here on top of this orange piece. So I love this, this look. Yeah, this, it's up to you. But I, if you're looking for the easiest way, layer it onto a base piece. Okay. We also have a hello from Sadie and Cindy from Sullivan City. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna have to cut my pieces out and then lay them down. Um, so let me see here. All right, so now I'm going to work on my denim piece here. I'm so excited that y'all are participating. I know I see, I hear uh, a lot of the same names that I usually see. And just thank y'all so much for supporting the museum. I love Workshop Wednesday. And next month, actually, we are going to be having a recycled art sculpture. Um, this is inspired by a current exhibit that we have up uh, called Industrial Nature by artist Michelle Sitzlin. And uh, she was just here, um, but she has since gone back to Ohio. And um, she, her art is all about taking trash and upcycling it and making it into beautiful, beautiful sculptural pieces. Um, so that's what next month's workshop is gonna be all about. If you want to sign up for that, definitely do that at the end of today. Uh, the registration is now open. Um, I'm gonna I'm doing my curve here, and I want it to be a little bit thicker. I'm just drawing it out here. Like I said, curves are really a little hard. Um, there we go. All right, I'm gonna cut this out. And then I'm gonna show you how to glue them down. And, oh, someone says they're making a cat pattern because they love cats. Oh, yay. That's cute. <laughs> Oh, we have Rosario also in here. I know we've seen her before from Rio Grande City. Hello, Garza family. Oh, I'm so glad everybody's telling us where they're tuning in from. Yes, I'd love to know if you haven't mentioned already where you're, how you've heard about this. Is this your first workshop Wednesday? Um, what's, oops, where did my piece go? There it is. <laughs> um, what are you excited to see at the museum? Um, if you haven't been here in a while, we have some really new exhibits. We have a wonderful exhibit upcoming at the end of the month called Uncovered Spaces, featuring a great number of women and LGBTQ plus artists. Um, that is going to be opening March 26th, and we have a lot of programming around it uh, for um, adults. Um, there's We're in collaboration with the Center for Latin American Arts at UHRUV, and they're going to be having a lot of programming there. So I encourage you to check out our website if you want to find out more information. Okay, so I have my um, my denim piece. 
pieces. And I'm going to show you just quickly how I glued them. So first off, I don't like this. Get that okay. okay. So to glue them, you're going to need your popsicle stick and your fabric glue. And then this is a great little scrap to have because you're gonna need somewhere to put your popsicle stick. So I'm thinking about how you want to um, lay out your fabric, go ahead and lay them out however you want. And I know I'm, I'm going a little bit quickly. I just wanna show you the step. Um, okay, so sure you again. I glue going. Um, okay, so I know I want this one here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put a line, frame it out. So I'm basically tracing the outline of it and then I'm putting a little bit in the middle. And I'm gonna take my glue stick and this is really important. You wanna spread it out and you wanna get those edges um, because oops, if you don't, um, you're gonna have bumps and it's gonna maybe make your fabric look a little bit bumpy but also you really need those edges to stay. Otherwise when you hang it, you might have like corners that come down. So you might need a little bit more glue in the corners. And this glue does take about, um, if you want a permanent, a permanent adhesive, it does take a couple hours to dry. So once you leave it there, um, you can, you are able to pick it up and move it if you don't like it. But once it's dry, it's, it's pretty permanent. Um, and you don't wanna pick it up or anything uh, and, and let those sweat pieces slide uh, around. You wanna find a place in your home to let it dry overnight. All right. So now I'm just gonna lay it on top of my base here. All right, I'm gonna do this piece here. Again, just doing an outline with the glue. And I'm gonna spread it with my popsicle stick very gently. If you have some glue, um, say you got some glue on the front of your fabric, you can get a little wet paper towel and, and kind of pick it up. Um, on back there together. Put a lot of glue on this one by accident. Mm -hmm. glue carried away, okay. So once I have them spread, I'm gonna pick it up and then a little hard with the two corners that I want lined up. Okay. I think it doesn't align, you can always trim it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm gonna trim that once it once it dries, you wanna trim. You don't want to trim while it's wet. You're gonna ruin your scissors and um you could um you can ruin the fabric. So there we go. Okay, I'm actually gonna take the other side of the popsicle stick and just smooth it out a little bit. It's a little bumpy. There we go. Awesome. So I went a little bit off from my design, um, but I'm just kind of going with what I think feels good. Um, now, I think I'm thinking about it now, I wanna do like a big black strip through the middle to connect it all. And then I'll go from there and put my prints in. But um, how are we doing on time? We're at 4.30. Okay. Okay. Do you need to go? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna do this one fabric, one black fabric, and then um, we can wrap it up. Okay, let me see my rotary cutter. Where did I put that? Here we go. Okay, so if you have a rotary cutter, um, this should be this should be really fun for you because <laughs> it it just cuts fabric like like butter. Um, if you don't, I'm going to show you really quickly how it works. I'm not that great with it, 
because I'm left-handed, I can't see like the direction of the blade is on the other side, um, but I'll do my best. So. So it just cut through that fabric, but <laughs> very quickly. Um, so these are great. And like I mentioned, I got this at HEB Plus. The one in Mission is my favorite. I love going there and shopping the stationery. Um, I found this in the, um, what do you call it? The drugstore aisle? I'm not really sure what it is. Pharmacy? Yeah, pharmacy aisle. They have a whole bunch of sewing stuff there. All right. So, let me see. It's about now. Okay. Didn't quite get some pieces. It's probably just a little dull because I used it to cut everyone's fabric scraps. <laughs> so I'm just going to go in and cut it with my scissors. And what did you say that thing is called? A rotary cutter? Yes, a rotary. Mm -hmm. um, I've also heard them called... Um, the fabric cutter. Yeah, the fabric cutter. Circle, circle blades, things like that. They also sell them at um, fabric stores and online. Okay, so I'm getting a lot of fraying here. And fraying is when the fabric, like, <laughs> when you cut it and then the fabric just does this, like, really thing with the, like, you can see the individual threads of the fabric. So I'm just going to gently trim them because, um, to me, they're a little annoying and you can pull them because how fabric is made is that you have you have um, threads going this way and you have threads going this way and they sort of crisscross into each other, right? Like a weave. And so if you pull the ones that are afraid, you still have these here that are being held in. So you'll just see like a little bit of a, of a difference, um, but they should still hold. So, okay. That works good to me. All right, now I'm gonna glue this down here. I actually really like this more neutral colored palette, this dark mood. I like that a lot. Okay, go in with the glue here. We have spring break coming up next week. Um, well, I know some folks might already be on spring break, but let us know what your spring break plans are because the museum is going to be open next Wednesday through Sunday, and we're going to be having some special programs going on. Um, in addition to our spring break camp, we have Brain Day, which is next Friday from 1 to 5 p.m., and we are going to be talking all about brain function, doing some growth reflex and memory experiments, um, we are going to be making some neurographic art, which I'm really excited for because it's something different. And then next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating World Water Day with McAllen Public Utility. Um, so that's March 20th. Okay, so this is how my piece is coming out so far. And you can see me with a little bit of the glue here. It's going to dry clear. Um, and uh, it should just go away if that cast. Okay, so um, I'm gonna show you, I mean, like I said, you could, you could just keep going for like another hour on this, um, but I wanna show you how to finish it off. So really quickly, um, I'm going to show you how to glue it onto your dowel. So you wanna have a, a little clear space here. Flip your fabric over. And again with these frayed edges. Okay. Um, place your dowel in here. You want to center it. And if it now say if you um if you cut it off a little bit after you don't have room, I'll show you in a sec too how to how to fix that. So I'm gonna put some glue down here first. Oh, 
for my dowel. Take my popsicle stick and spread it. Okay, Put my dowel in there just to keep it glued in and make sure your, your wooden dowel is centered, but it's not <laughs> that centered. Um, pretty sticky glue set, I can't really tell. I had it quite the first time. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yes, perfect. So now we're going to add a little bit more glue, this time at the tip here. Um, okay. Spread that around. Fold it over, and then I'm going to take the other side of my popsicle stick and just sort of press it down because some glue might come out from the ends. That glue is like, you can use it to kind of tuck in some places that are not as well glued. There we go. So it's okay if it comes out. Um, you definitely just want to leave it like this, though, to dry overnight. Because if you dry it like this, it might get stuck to a paper or something. So you want to leave it however, whichever way you have the, the glue up. Um, and then uh, I'll just show you really quickly. This is how it should hang. So then you can uh, hang it on some pins or some nails in the wall like this. Um, but say that uh, you did this and you didn't have uh, extra fabric to fold it over in the back like I just did. You can... Let's see. The next one up here. So, say this is your fabric and you don't have enough to fold over. What you can do is take some scraps here. This is perfect. Cut it in half. I'm going to cut this in half into some strips. And then, what I'm going to do is glue this down. And I'm gluing them face down because we're going to flip them over and you want the pretty side up face down on here as well. Okay. And then um, what we're going to do is, is fold it like this. So we're going to need to put the dowel inside the loops. And then put some glue here, spread it around. And then firmly press that in. So then you have like a little strip. And you definitely want to leave that to, to, to dry before you lift it up because it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be as, um, as strong yet of a bond. So yeah. you have a situation like this. So That's if you wanted to, you can put another one here. If yours is a little bit long, you know, you might want to put another strap here. Um, so those are the two options for hanging. And um, let me just show you again how the finished piece can look like. And I hope you, does anyone have any questions? I don't see any popping up. Nope. All right, well, don't forget to enter to win the sewing bundle. We have lots of goodies in here. If you wanted to start a career as a textile artist, um, we have a needle and a rotary cutter and thread in here um, for you to get started. Great, cool. So well, thank you everyone for joining me for this Workshop Wednesday, and I hope you sign up to participate in April's Workshop Wednesday. And I hope you come to the museum soon. We have a lot of great exhibits coming up, like I had mentioned, a lot of great programs happening. And, um, and yeah. <laughs>